Ladies and gentlemen, let's get game into the video. Let us discuss AMD's Mantle. It has actually been released and we have some performance numbers straight from AMD and AMD have actually spoken to us a little bit regarding Mantle. Now I've done this as an article as well, primarily because there's a hell of a lot of numbers, screenshots, and there's actually a guide on how to get it working with BF4 and some other bits and pieces as well. So, um, I've actually discussed some stuff with Robert Halleck from AMD and he's actually spoken about some of the rumors that's been going around concerning the Mantle API. Now, basically, to fill you guys in, what pretty much happened is that for a long time, we thought that the primary goal of Mantle, the API, since it's typically a graphics API, um, we thought that the goal of it was to improve GPU performance, right? So in effect, um, we assumed that you would get the biggest increase if, say, for example, your card would max out at 1080p, um, let's just say 50 frames a second, it couldn't go any faster, but in reality, you know, you use Mantle, it goes a little bit quicker. That's not quite how this works. It's actually a lot more complicated than that, and uh, Robert's gone into some of how this works, and they've also sent me uh, some technical slides as well. So, is there truth to the fact that it's predominantly in CPU-bound scenarios? In other words, say for example you have a lower spec CPU, will it help more in those cases than in GPU-bound scenarios? Well, Robert responded to me and said, we've made it abundantly clear that Mantle will represent a significant uplift in any scenario, but the benefit will be more pronounced in CPU-bound scenarios rather than GPU. Even with that in mind, let me show you several GPU-bound scenarios that show a huge uplift in a direct result of the Mantle. Now, I'm certainly not going to read all of these out because he has given several, to say the least, and as I said, if you want more, you can just click on the link. But um, Star Swarm at 1080p at medium settings with an i7-496X um, from Intel, that's an i7-4960X, uh, and a Radeon r 7 to 60x, um, for example, without Mantle using DX, it was getting 13.95 frames per second, so 13.95. With Mantle, it's 126% faster at 31.69%. Um, the Attract test, meanwhile, I'm just going to round this up and say 30 frames per second um, with DX. Um, with DirectX, with Mantle, you're getting 40, so that's 32% faster, which isn't too shabby at all. He then further added right there are three examples where Mantle is making massive performance improvements on a GPU bound systems, and the two of them turned unplayable frame rates into playable frame rates. Everyone needs to have uh, a nuanced understanding of the fact that the engine, the type of games, developer optimization, the system configurations all have a significant impact on overall performance. In addition, AMD have also provided other benchmarks. For example, um, uh, same CPU i7-4960X plus an R9-290X, which is a high-end GPU, obviously. Uh, you're getting 1080p at 4 times AA. Uh, that's 9.2% uh, improvement in Mantle. Uh, exactly the same system, but 1600p ultra preset once again, four times AA, 10% improvements on Mantle. Um, so it's not bad, you know, it's not huge, but we'll go into more benchmarks in a moment. Now, AMD have told me specifically that Mantle is an API, uh, a Mantle API that's application programming interface, for those of you who don't know, imagine most of you do, but still. And its current iteration uniquely leverages the hardware in the GCN GPUs more broadly. GCN, by the way, is Graphics Core Next. Also, any other GPUs over the Radio the 7000 series, in other words. Uh, GPUs more broadly. Mantle is functionally similar to DX and OpenGL, but Mantle is different in that it was purpose-built as a lower-level API. By lower level, it's meant that the language of Mantle is more closely matches the way modern graphics car or uh, graphics architectures, I'm sorry, uh, like Mantle's own GCN, are designed to execute code. The primary benefit of lower-level API is the reduction of software bottlenecks, such as the time a GPU and CPU must spend translating slash understanding slash reorganizing code on the fly before it can be executed and presented to the user as graphics. Mantle comes in 
con contrast to the high-level APIs, which offer broader compatibility with multi-GPUs, but does so at the expense of lower performance and efficiency. So in other words, what they're basically saying, uh, I'll cut through the red tape a little bit there, is they're pretty much saying that because this is designed for our GPUs with our systems in mind, you know, basically a lot of the functionalities were removed that don't pertain to the way that we do things, the way our cards work, the way, you know, so in other words, the CPU isn't going to be wasting cycles doing things that just don't benefit our particular architecture. That's all they really mean by that. Man AMD also made it clear that, yes, it is designed primarily for CPU. Uh, so most of us, of course, in the tech would call that CPU bound. But um, they have pointed out that this isn't the only cases. Now, one of the big issues with DirectX and OpenGL is they don't really scale all that well uh, with multiple CPUs for rendering. And that's been a really big problem, particularly as now we're going wider. In fact, in a way, this problem's be going to become more prevalent because of the way we're going multi-core with like the PS4, Xbox One, and so on. A lot of games developers are splitting their cores, um, their rendering tasks, and their jobs over multiple processors or multiple cores. Now, the reason they do that, of course, on the console is because, well, the CPUs aren't that powerful. It's as simple as that. You know, the AMD Jaguar is just pretty much a low-end CPU. Um, if you compare it to, like, an i7 or something like that on, like, a desktop. So, for those of us on a PC with, like, a low-end processor, like a low-end AMD or a mid-range Intel, for example, they've pretty much done a variety of different techniques to improve performance. Um, these are low overhead validation and processing of API commands, explicit command and buffer control, close to linear performance scaling from recording command buffer to multiple CPU cores, and reduced runtime shader compilation overhead. AMD have also told me quite readily, they've been very upfront and honest, that if a title is GPU bound, so let's just clarify what GPU bound is for the few of you who don't know. All it means is basically the GPU is flat out. It's at the limit of its resources. So for example, it just doesn't have enough frame buffer to hold all the thing. It just doesn't have enough uh, memory bandwidth. Um, whatever reason, it doesn't have the fill rate to do what you're asking it to do. Then the API will be less effective in terms of a boost. You will still get one but it's not going to be so huge as in CPU bound scenarios. Um, so AMD have done some things for this and they've given a few examples. Reduction of command buffer submission, explicit control of resources, compression expands and synchronizations. Uh, by the way guys, sorry, I'm just gonna interrupt myself for a second. This is getting pretty technical to a lot of you. Um, but some of you might just want the raw basic facts and this is going to take me like a long time to do like a simplified version. So if you want more details, I'm probably going to contact AMD again for kind of like a more in-depth uh, questions. But I want to get this up so that, you know, those of you who understand what this means, you understand. But for those of you who maybe aren't quite so sure, I can... Um, explain in more detail in not too distant future but anyway I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting anyway let's just jump back in so uh, what was it expands and synchronizations asynchronous DMA queues for data uploads independent from the graphics engine asynchronous compute queues for overlapping compute and graphics workloads I'm sure many of you are going to be frothing at the mouth of the compute part. Data format optimizations via flexible buffer slash image processing and advanced anti-aliasing features for MSAA and EQAA optimizations. Now, AMD are also quite keen to point out that this is a beta. Um, and they are going to be working on this for the upcoming months. The problem is... It's not just in AMD's hands. They've made it very abundantly clear that, and I quote, uh, developers are still familiarizing themselves with Mantle and its relationships to Graphics Core Next. In other words, to utilize a lot of the functions and the features with the GCN architecture, in other words, to really 
reduce the chances of a title being so GPU bound, in other words, to help if a title is GPU bound, uh, for Mantle to help if a title is GPU bound. It's really more down to the game's developers than what it is AMD. AMD can give them the tools, but it's not so easy um, to get, basically get them to use it. So it's really down for the developers to understand how the GCN architecture works. It's down to the game's developers to utilize the tools to do a lot of optimizations and so on. So that's a bit of a problem, specifically because obviously we're dealing with multi-format and multi-platform releases. So conceivably... I'm not saying this is the case, but conceivably, we could have a situation where a games developer might have to release a game on, uh, let's say, in a couple of years' time. They could need to release it on, say, the PS4, the Xbox One, possibly a new Nintendo system if they release one by then, who the hell knows, um, and several PC platforms. It's possible they could be doing it on Mantle. It's possible that it could be... Um, maybe OpenGL, particularly if Steam's, uh, Steam OS starts to really come forward, as well as DirectX. So that's always a problem. We do know that AMD are possibly going to use Mantle on the, Steam, on the Valve platform, but right now on the Linux platform, should I say, but right now they're more focused on like OpenGL more than that, uh, so they've told me. So it's going to really be more the PC that Mantle is going to benefit right now. Um, it also, however, does seem that multi-GPU multi configurations, in other words, crossfire, because it's certainly not going to help uh, um, those of us with like NVIDIA hardware or any, uh, it actually improves the scaling quite a bit, so we're told. Um, if nothing else, in my opinion anyway, Mantle really does highlight just the the need for an overhaul or a major improvement of DirectX. And I'm not saying like DirectX is necessarily Microsoft's fault. I want to I wanna point that out because some people can then say, oh, crappy Microsoft and blah, blah. It's not really Microsoft's fault. It's just that it's really difficult to make such sweeping changes and maintain compatibility. Um, then again, I'm not like a DirectX programmer per se, but I have a reasonable understanding of it. But from what I understand, there are some major issues with the overhead of the um, various draw calls and various commands as well. They really do need to sort some of this out because, well, quite simply put, it's really, really limiting PC gaming right now. And uh, that's something that's really not, of course, good for anyone involved. So what I'm hoping is that this is going to help to spur on Microsoft and their DirectX division. I'm hoping that they're going to come up with, you know, DirectX uh, 12 or by the time, you know, 12 or 13 or whatever at least, a lot of these kinks are going to be removed, but it's really just up in the air now. Who the heck knows? I mean, obviously, they've just released a new version of DX11, 11.2, um, if memory serves, which includes some goodies like, you know, improved tiled resources and so on, which is good, but it also doesn't really fix some of the issues that have been prevalent in DirectX. I mean, they have done some measures, like DX9, I believe it was, or was it 9 or 10, really helped to like push down the overhead and improve the uh, multi-core rendering side of things, but it's still nowhere near as, as good as what we need. But anyway, um, I'm certainly not going to go too ranty on that. Instead, let's, let's right, maintain a little bit of a focus here. So, what about Battlefield 4 and Mantle? Well, we get some we've got some information from DICE, and I've linked that in the article, so you can check that out if you so desire. But currently, the Battlefield 4 patch has been released. So, if you want to pause the video and open up Origin and start downloading the patch, be wary. It is 1.23 gigs. So it's not, you know, huge, but if you've got a slow-ass internet connection, it could take you a couple of coffees, basically, to, to download. And you're going to need either Windows 7 or 8 and AMD's Catalyst 14.1 betas. So if you don't have those, you're not going to be able to use it, right? Anyway, 
Um, I've got the instructions of how to basically install uh, and utilize BF4 uh, Mantle in the article. It's not very difficult though. You've got to basically open Origin, uh, choose yes for the access control. It'll verify the files. You basically wait for it to download, start, ma uh, start Battlefield 4, and then pretty much choose Mantle as your uh, renderer rather than DX or whatever. And then you can pretty much enjoy yourself. Uh, Dice have released some internal numbers. Once again, I've linked those in the article, but I've also copied and pasted them as well. Uh, I'm certainly not going to read all of these out because there's a lot of specs. But, for example, um, the Kavari APU, if it's 720p medium settings, um, they've basically found that they've got a 14% um, improvement. So that's not bad, I'm sure you'll agree. A Radeon 7970 and an FX8350 meanwhile is 25%. It's really impressive because an i7-3970 Extreme with um, two R9 290Xs, 4 gigs, um, maximum uh, settings ultra basically 1080p four times MMSAA blah 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 blah. It's 58% faster uh, according to to Dice, which is quite ludicrous actually. It's actually above the 45% mark, which um, of course AMD were touting. Now AMD have also released and improved the benchmarking tools within Battlefield 4, but that's quite uh, that's a lot of typing and you know. Um, pretty much commands, so I'm not going to read out a set of commands to you guys, because you're probably just going to forget. So if you're really curious, you can either, you know, Google around, or you can simply just click on the description link, and it will take you to tell you how to do it. So it's all up to you. Anyway, so what are my thoughts? Well, great free performance. It's clear that there's a lot of work still to be done. AMD are working on the GPU side of things. Unfortunately, it's really down to games developers. I'm excited about Mantle. I'm not going to lie. That's not because, you know, AMD are giving me anything. That's not because I'm being completely totally honest with you guys. Um, AMD aren't giving me anything. They're not asking me to praise the, the you know API. But I'm excited about it because I think it's going to improve uh, PC gaming or it's going to kickstart something, providing it gets enough support. Um, AMD have clarified that. They've they've even said, you know, they thank everyone for the support because, you know, it's clear that there is a movement among games developers and gamers that, you know, we want to fix some of the issues that are uh, currently in the PCs. But whether Mantle is going to be the one to do it, it's unknown. One thing's for certain, it's certainly certainly going to be something to think about if you're thinking about buying a new graphics card. For example, let's say you're on the fence and you're thinking to yourself, huh, should I go with NVIDIA, should I go with AMD? And that's like an internal struggle. For me, for example, I don't give a crap which graphics card I'll buy. I'll just be totally honest. In fact, most of the time, I, I have the last couple of times gone with NVIDIA. Why? Well, it's actually simply because of hardware physics, because I'm running the channel. Um... Sometimes there are a few games which do support hardware physics. And so I like to just say on the video, you know what, this is what the game looks like with hardware physics. It's good for like graphics comparisons, that type of jazz. But, you know, now it's like, well, you've got Mantle. So that's like, it's just something to think of because now AMD have got Mantle, NVIDIA have got hardware physics, and they've got G Sync. But for those who have maybe lower budgets and they don't have, you know, like, couple of the thousand basically spend on a PC. Well, that's okay. Let's be realistic. Let's say, you know, you're not going to buy like a GTX 780 Ti or, you know, the R9 290X or whatever. Then you've certainly got something to think about there if you're going to be buying like a lower end GPU and a lower end CPU. Mantle could certainly help. It's basically pre performance. And I'm curious what uh, NVIDIA are going to do about this. You know, are they going to respond in kind? Um, there has been rumours that, you know, they, they're thinking about doing something like this. And it's clear that NVIDIA are not stupid. They are they are evidently watching to see just how popular this thing becomes. So, 
all we can do is wait. And it's certainly, in my personal opinion anyway, it's a really good time to be a PC gamer. And, well, I hope you all stick with me through it, my friends. Anyway, um, this video has been quite a lot longer than what I originally anticipated it to be. This is supposed to be a quick update, damn it. Oh, well, I don't seem to be able to stop talking. That's a problem. Anyway, I'll, on a serious note, I'm going to bid you farewell. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.